Good morning, friends. Today we are covering topic 14, Acids and Alkalis, part 2. In this unit, we have checked out some of the common laboratory acids and alkalis, the properties of acids and alkalis, investigating how to classify solutions using litmus paper, and investigating the degree of acidity or alkalinity of given solutions. Remember that degree of acidity or alkalinity is actually pH. So we looked at how to find out a pH of a solution using litmus paper or universal indicator solution. But today we are going to find out how do we define neutralization, how do we state the word equation for that, and explain what is the importance of neutralization in daily life. Let's do a recap session of what we've learned before. So how do we classify solutions? Remember that solution means that you have a solute that is dissolved in a solvent, and it can either be classified as acidic, alkaline, or neutral. So all of these have their own different properties, and we need to know what those are, what are the examples of them that we can find at home, and what are the examples of these types of solutions that we can find in the lab. So let's look at acidic solutions first. The properties of acids are is that they are sour, corrosive, they turn litmus paper red, so the blue one to red, and they have a pH scale, which is a degree of acidity or alkalinity of pH 0 to 6. Some of the examples at home we can find is citric acid, ethanoic acid or vinegar, and lactic acid that you can find in yogurt. Examples in the lab are hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, nitric acid, and ethanoic acid, or it is also called acetic acid. Alkaline solutions have the properties that they are bitter, they have a soapy feel, and they turn red litmus paper blue. So we're using a red one here to test for it, and it will actually turn blue if it is alkaline. The pH scale is pH 8 to 14. Examples at home of alkaline solutions you can find is laundry detergent, bleach, and toothpaste. And examples in the lab you can find is sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, aka lime water, and ammonia solution. Remember that we actually use calcium hydroxide or lime water to test for carbon dioxide. Neutral solutions have a property that they don't have effects on litmus paper. So the litmus paper will not change at all. And even though if it is red or even blue, the pH scale is pH 7. And examples at home we can find is water, and in the lab is distilled water. Now let's look into neutralization, which is learning objective 14.2. So these are our learning objectives. Define neutralization as a chemical reaction where an acid and an alkali reacts to form a salt and water only. State the word equation for neutralization and explain the importance of neutralization in daily life. Our step to success is you need to be able to discuss the meaning of neutralization, write down what is the word equation, and write five examples of neutralization. What is neutralization? Neutralization is a process or a chemical reaction between an acid and an alkali to form salt and water. So you get an acid, you mix it with an alkali, and you actually get a salt and water. So how do we name these salts after neutralization? It's pretty similar like we did before. Salts are actually named after the acids from which they are formed. So when you get acids like sulfuric acid added to a, an alkaline or an alkali, the salt formed is called a sulfate. And when you have an alkaline solution mixed with hydrochloric acid, you get the salt chloride. 
and when you add nitric acid to an alkali during neutralization, the salt formed is called nitrate. Salts are named after the acids from which they are formed. So how this is going to be is that, so you look at the acid, so this will be the last name of the salt formed. The first name comes from the alkali itself. So let's try out sodium hydroxide plus sulfuric acid. The salt formed is called sodium sulfate plus, don't forget, water. So remember that neutralization, you have an alkali and an acid. You mix them together, make them react to form a salt plus water. Let's try out calcium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. So we take the first name calcium and then from the acid name chloric, which is chloride. So the salt form is calcium chloride plus water. Potassium hydroxide plus nitric acid, we take the name potassium and the name nitric from the acids. So it's potassium nitrate plus water. An example of neutralization that occurs in daily life is this thing called an antacid. An antacid is an alkali. Although it has the word acid there, it Ant is kind of like from anti, so it's anti-acid, and what's anti-acid is an alkali, which is kind of like the opposite of an acid. It is used to remove or cancel out excess acid produced in your stomach during indigestion. So these are examples of antacids that you can actually get from the supermarket, and indigestion actually means that you have some pain or discomfort in your upper abdomen and you can even get something like a burning pain in the chest which is called heartburn so people get this when they have this thing called indigestion and this happens because in your stomach itself there is an acid hydrochloric acid and when you for example eat too fast or there you kind of your stomach is just upset on that day so sometimes the acid can actually move up the esophagus here or the gullet i think that's what you called it um and it causes like a burning sensation. The acid shouldn't come come out of the stomach actually because it might damage your other organs. So to counter this, what people take is the antacid. So it's an alkali. So when they take the alkali, it's going to neutralize the acid that came out and they're going to feel a bit more comfortable. What happens during neutralization? Remember, you get an acid and an alkali is mixed until the mixture is actually neither acidic nor alkaline. And don't forget that you actually form a salt plus water. But this acid and alkali, during neutralization, it cancels out each other's properties to form a neutral solution. Remember that acid and alkalis, when they're mixed, they don't always neutralize, but you can mix them until they are neutralized. So you get an acid and an alkali and you put them together until they cancel out each other's properties to form a neutral solution. So the properties of this neutral solution is that it's not acidic, so that means it's not going to turn the blue litmus paper red, neither is it alkaline, so it doesn't turn the red litmus paper blue either. So how do you prepare salt by neutralization? Step one, we add an acid to the alkali until the mixture is neither acidic or alkaline to make a salt solution. So let's use sulfuric acid here and we're going to use sodium hydroxide. So we're going to put the sulfuric acid inside a beaker and the sodium hydroxide as well because we want to prevent from contaminating our stock solution. So remember to put it in a beaker first, and then we're going to transfer it to another beaker. So we're going to neutralize both the sodium hydroxide and the sulfuric acid. How do we know that each of these solutions are actually acidic and alkaline? So we actually use pH indicators for that. So if we use a pH indicator for the sulfuric acid and the sodium hydroxide, 
sulfuric acid is going to turn red and the sodium hydroxide when we add it it's going to turn purple so that's how we actually know that this is alkaline and this is acidic so how can we tell that this solution is neutral is that if we use a ph indicator it's going to turn green green for neutral and because we use sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide remember we use the alkaline name first so it's sodium sulfate that is our salt solution formed what we can do to prepare just the salt is that we can remember that it's a solution so the solute here is actually the salt being dissolved in a solvent so we can actually evaporate the salt solution to just get the salt so what we do is that we'll get the salt solution the sodium sulfate the clear one and we're going to put it on an evaporating dish we're going to put that on top of a beaker filled with water and then we are going to boil that water once the water is boiled <coughs> What happens is that it's going to heat up the salt solution until it evaporates all the water and we're only going to be left with a solid salt and that solid salt is still called sodium sulfate. The only difference is that this one is in a solution, it's mixed with water, but then this one, the water has already evaporated. So what are the uses of these neutralized salts? So these salts, for example, sodium chloride is the table salt that you can actually find at your house. And it helps to improve flavor in food and also can help to preserve food. Ammonium chloride is used in batteries. And ammonium sulfate is used in fertilizers. And potassium nitrate is used in fireworks. So we can actually make all of these salts by mixing an acid and an alkali until they are neutralized or mix a neutralized so solution and evaporate it and just get the salt and use it for all those things. So neutralization is very important because when you know that you can neutralize the effects of an acid or an alkali, you can treat things like in your daily life with the same concept so for example treatment of insect bites insects typically inject this thing called formic acid and this can lead to blisters inflammation redness swelling and pain itching and irritation so what people can do when you have a bee sting or an ant bite and it really stings you can use baking powder which is an alkali to help neutralize it first so this can be one of your first aid but for things like venom, they are actually alkaline. So to go against this alkaline, we can neutralize it by using an acid. So we can use vinegar to neutralize the alkalinity in wasp venom. Don't forget to go to the doctors after that. Another example of neutralization is actually cleaning your teeth. Bacteria is trapped between our teeth and it produces an acid when they break down sugar and food in our teeth. So what happens is that actually in our mouth itself and especially around our teeth, we actually have bacteria trapped in there. And why do we need to brush our teeth is that we want to neutralize the effects of this bacteria. So when bacteria actually, when you eat and after you eat, you kind of have a bit of food left in your teeth being stuck and these bacteria they actually feed on those food as well and when they break down the food they actually form this acid called lactic acid and lactic acid is actually not really good for your teeth because it can actually break down the enamel and in the end you can actually get a toothache a tooth pain or even worse you'll get tooth decay this is when the acid, the lactic acid produced by the bacteria, damages the enamel of the teeth and causes it to rot. Then you'll have to take out the whole teeth. So the toothpaste actually contains weak alkali. So it helps to neutralize the acid produced by the bacteria. 
that's why we have to always clean our teeth after we eat and before we go to bed. Another example of neutralization is shampoo and conditioner. Most shampoos are actually alkaline, but the thing about having too much alkaline is that you can make your hair very stiff and very rough. So what happens is that you can use conditioner to neutralize the alkali to make your hair even more softer. That's why when you use conditioner, your hair just feels so much better. Last example of neutralization, we actually talked about this before a little bit, is reducing soil acidity. So we can use this thing called quicklime or calcium chloride or slaked lime called calcium hydroxide to help neutralize the acid in soils so that plants can grow. This is a, an example is that you can see that this soil is over here, the brown color is acid soil and it's very acidic. Sometimes you can get this from pollution um, and then you can get acid rain, for example, and you can see that this plant is growing much more shorter than this plant here. So what happens is that when you have soil that is acidic, you can add calcium chloride or quick lime, um, and then you actually add it in here to the soil, and you can see that it grew much more bigger and healthier. So that's all for today, and I'll see you guys next time.